So you all know exactly what time it is, it's breakfast time and we're going in like Flynn with this one. Uh, and there's no better way of starting off the day with a bacon and egg bagel and a cup of coffee. So as you can see there's four slices of bacon there and it's quickly jumped to six, you missed that part. But this is American bacon so we're going to throw this straight under the grill. And then we're going to sprinkle a little bit of cheese on the bagel there unevenly. And yes I know the egg's a little bit more overdone than you'd like it. I had to put the lid on the saucepan because it was spitting everywhere. And yes, for you that bacon might look underdone or rare for your standards, but this is how I like it. It was grilled and I was getting impatient at the time. So let me enjoy it. Hello people and welcome back. It's been a while to be perfectly honest. Holiday season has long gone and we're back in the middle of semester now so I'm back to being busy again. So it's going to be a long time, possibly until summer, until another, until another holiday video is coming. So I've got nothing particularly interesting to show you. So I'm going to hit the next video off with a Q&A. A Q&A without anyone asking me any cues. So, I'm going to hit a couple of topics now, some topics that you might be interested in, some of the, some of the questions that come up whenever my friends are talking to me. Um, although I've been locked out of my Instagram account, so none of my friends can ask me any questions anymore. So I'm going to go with the topics that a few of my friends have made previous comments on. First one, cost of living. Now I'm going to look at the cost of living from a few angles. We've got rent and the cost of houses in China, and then we've got food and going out. And now this is a bit of a tricky one, the cost of living, because one of the biggest misconceptions and one of the most frequent comments is, you know, I, I, bet, it's leap, I bet it's cheap to live in China. You know, I've, got, I've got a mate back at home who always, always thinks it's cheap to live in China. It is not cheap to live in China. Generally speaking, it is not cheap to live in China at all. It's actually very expensive. Having said that, I'm going to talk about my particular city and then the more generalized um, the more generalized point of view of Chinese cities okay so rent if you want to live in a major city ie Shanghai Guangzhou Shenzhen any any of the any of the capital of the provinces rent is not cheap you're gonna be living in pretty bad apartment you're probably gonna be sharing an apartment with three three other rooms for about 300 pounds a month three four hundred five hundred pounds a month it is not cheap okay so i personally advise not to live in a major city if you're looking to live life cheaply because rent rent and the cost of houses in major cities is ridiculously expensive it's almost comparable to london if not more expensive when you when you compare it to the quality having said that i hit the jackpot with my particular city in Guizhou because my my particular city is still a third tier developing city i think so rent in my city is that cheap. I've got a, I've just moved into a brand new apartment um, and we managed to, to bargain with the landlord for 3,000 RMB a month. And 3,000 RMB a month works out to about 330 pounds, Great British pounds. Okay, and then for, for 3,000, 
So 3,000 RMB a month, I get three bedrooms, two bathrooms, uh, one with a bath in, um, a big kitchen and a spacious living room, a balcony where I'm sitting now with a river view, and then also another balcony over there, which is where we hang the clothes and everything. Okay, so I got very, very lucky with my city. My city is the only city that I know that is really cheap for rent. However, housing, houses here, to buy an apartment, you're looking for like, like a pretty bad apartment, you're looking for about two to three million RMB, which is about 200 to 300,000 pounds. Um, again, you're, you're only getting, for that money, you're only getting maybe a two bed apartment with one bathroom. So it is, it's not cheap, it's not cheap. Whereas in the UK, you could probably get a semi-detached house for the same price. Okay, so rent, rent, it really depends where you live and how you get lucky. But yeah, in general, not cheap for rent, not cheap at all. Before I move on to the next question, I am going to give you a little tour of the apartment, just so you know what kind of what kind of great apartment I got for my 3,000 RMB a month. And now this this actually this this apartment complex was one of the first apartment complexes built in Cuello, and it was supposed to be one of the first and one of the best. But now it's a little bit outdated, so it's kind of old style. Um, but it's, it's, it's incredible value for, for the money that I'm actually paying. Bearing in mind, my last apartment was 2,700 RMB, um, only 300 RMB cheaper, which is about 30 quid cheaper. And for that, I only got two bedrooms, one bathroom, and a small living room. So this, this house is a massive upgrade for the small increase in price. So excuse the mess, but I'm going to take it for a little tour now. So from the front door we head straight into the living room and there is a Mrs. Hugging the Cat with a nice Alpland sofa in the corner there. Looking straight out onto the balcony, my girlfriend's done a nice job with the balcony with two deck chairs and a small table, just the right size. And there's an old rusty TV in there, so we go from the living room straight into the dining room, but we don't do anything with the dining room as you can see, just a storage place for the cat, straight into a spacious kitchen, and when I say spacious, spacious for Chinese standards, your kitchens at home are probably triple the size. And we've got another spare balcony over there for the washing up, which I probably don't spend enough time doing. But this apartment is three bedrooms and two bathrooms luckily enough so here is the first kind of spare bathroom which is the shower room with a nice western toilet there old style and here's the spare bedroom that we use for a little, a little bit of teaching and some weights to throw around in a spare bed if anyone needs it and here is the master bathroom which i'm most impressed with the two sinks the massage shower and finally a bath the first apartment we've ever found with a bath inside of it and we go from there straight into the master bedroom. It's a little bit messy, I know. And then with an absolutely stunning river view, as we're about to see. Um, so we are in Dijing One, which is right in the center of the city. And one of the first nice build apartments in the city when it first originated. Um, and we do have one more room, but my missus was absolutely fuming when I showed you showed the camera this room because this is just a storage room so all of the carnage and all of the chaos from the house is just dashed into this room um, but we have the space so it's absolutely fine so this is the new pad hope you enjoyed one of the beauties about spending a little bit more money on an apartment in China is every apartment complex comes with a little, a little well a little, so it's a pretty big garden area where there's playgrounds for the kids uh, places for the older people to sit and hang out uh, and it's very beautifully kept and to top it off with the weather it's really nice, everyone, everyone feels really safe all, all of the apartment complexes are protected by security so it's a really beautiful place to live if you spend a little bit more money it can get you a lot more in value
did say this place was well kept a minute ago, but this pond behind me is greener than grass. Um, so yeah, maybe they could give this a bit of a clean, but in general, the apartment complex is incredibly clean and all of the flowers are looked after. Anyway, moving on. So the next uh, topic of conversation is food. Food and going out. So first I'm gonna hit the topic of food and the cost of food. Uh, now, when you go to a supermarket in China, uh, it's pretty much comparable with that of the UK. It's, it's, it's not significantly cheaper and it's not significantly more expensive. Saying that, if you want to get Western products, don't forget Western products are highly taxed in China. So if you want to buy bad quality Western products, they're way more expensive than the UK. But if you want to buy local products, in general, it's pretty comparable to that of the UK. There's, there's no real price difference. You know, chicken's about the same price, beef's about the same price, vegetables are a tiny bit cheaper, but also a little bit less quality. Uh, so again, there's, there's no comparable difference. Now, now, the one significant difference between food here and the food in the UK is that going out to eat is much cheaper and much better value. For example, for example, you'll buy, you'll buy a few the kind of the culture of eating here is the sharing dishes so you'll buy a big sharing dish for everyone to share and now so for example me and my girlfriend ate at a hacker restaurant last night we bought three sharing dishes and that came to about about 16 pounds so 16 pounds we're both we're both full up okay so it's, again it's pretty simple food it's nothing it's nothing creative that takes lots of processes to cook most of it's just fried um, but again for so for a meal for two was 16 pounds so that is the only real noticeable difference in the price of food is when you go out to eat, it's much cheaper to go out to eat. But supermarkets, there is no real difference. And then the prices are going out. So I'd have to say in general, the prices of going out in China are way more expensive than that of the UK. So if you're gonna to go to any major city, as you've probably seen from my last video in Chengdu and Chongqing, the prices of beer there was ridiculous absolutely ridiculous I, I couldn't even believe it myself it's way more expensive than London um, and you can't really you don't really want to go out you don't really want to pick a kind of third tier developing city to go out I mean this city is pretty boring in terms of the nightlife so your only choices are to go to a major city and then once you're in a major city the price of the beer is ridiculous you're getting um, you're getting pretty average beer, pretty average import beer for about six, seven pounds a pint. If you go to Shenzhen, it's about 60, 70, 80 RMB a beer, which works out, yeah, about seven, eight, seven, eight pounds a pint. And then to get a cocktail, cocktails are about the same price. Um, and that's, and that's not even like a major city. Shenzhen is a big major city, but there's so many major cities. It's like, if you go to a major city in the UK, for example, London, you expect to pay high prices. But there are so many major cities in China, you don't really expect to be paying such ridiculous prices. Um, but they've got, a, they've got a raging middle class here, so I guess people can afford it. Um, so yeah, going out, not cheap at all, way more expensive. I'm going to talk about is culture. Now I'm going to hit culture from three different angles or people, places and food and the first one I'm going to hit is places. Now one of the um, big topics before coming to China and a topic that I was kind of expecting to hit is a huge culture shock. Um, to be perfectly honest if you land if you land into a major city into China you won't notice notice any difference between a big city here and a big city in the UK or a big city in America. They're all incredibly well built, incredibly well developed. You're going to see a lot of the same brands around. The only noticeable difference is obviously the language and all of the signboards are in Chinese and obviously not English. Having said that, if you go to the shopping centers, you'll see all of the Western brands. Um, you'll see Chinese Western brands. So uh, again, if you were to take a bird's eye perspective of a major city in China, there's no difference. There's no difference in places. Um, however, if you were to look closer into each city and if you were going to um, suburban areas or down to some of the old streets, that's where you notice the real difference in culture in places. Um, 
m most cities, most of the cities here have done a good job of kind of holding on, if holding on to the old town areas, if it's like a really popular area with some, with some really specialized local cuisines. A lot of the cities here have done a good job of holding on to those poor looking areas, but, but really authentic, cool looking, cool looking traditional places. Okay, so again, if you're expecting to come to China and land, land in a land that's so different to anything you experience in the UK, you're probably wrong. You're probably wrong. You know, it's, I, live in a, I live in a third tier developing city and still I'm about two minutes away from a Calvin Klein shop, two minutes away from, you know, an expensive designer brand shop. So, so, so it really depends on which, which area of the city you live in. And again, if you go to Shanghai, don't forget Shanghai was colonized by a couple of countries. So, so a lot of the architecture there is um, from the UK and from France. So, so yeah, the culture shock in terms of places, there was no real culture shock in terms of the place. The only major difference was the language and obviously it's hard, it's just harder to get around because you can't read anything before coming to China. <laughs> Topic I want to talk about underneath culture is the people here. Okay. Um, so so coming to China and coming to this city specifically in Huizhou, um, obviously the first main barrier was the language. As I've mentioned previously, I live in a I live in a third tier developing city. So so nobody here speaks English. So the first barrier of coming to the city was the language. Obviously I couldn't couldn't talk to anyone. But still, even though, even though there was such a massive language barrier, people here were incredibly friendly. Um, incredibly friendly. And if you go to cities, some of the major cities, pretty much, if you go to a bar or a restaurant, all of the waitresses and waiters will speak English. So if I was to go to Guangzhou or Shenzhen, the waiters there will speak English. So, so it was incredibly difficult when first arriving into this city, Huizhou, as, as there was such a huge barrier, you know, even doesn't matter where you go, no one really spoke English, so you had to pick up the language as fast as possible. And by as fast as possible, it took me a couple of years just to be able to go to a bar and a restaurant and order and order some order some basic food as I'm a slow learner. But 99.9% .9 of the people are incredibly friendly. You know, they're really welcoming. A lot a lot of people will invite you. If you were to go to a bar, a lot of the people would invite you for a drink. They'd, they'd offer to pay for your beer, they'd offer to buy you some snacks, they'd, they'd add your WeChat and then, and then invite you out the next day, um, which, which you do, do not get in my country in the UK. So, so credit, credit goes to the local people here. Um, most people you meet are incredibly friendly. Um, and then if you want to talk specifically about the cultures, Jesus Christ, my ass is on fire. The weather's stunning today, it's about 30 degrees. Um, uh, where was I? Yeah, so the culture of people. So I'm going to talk about the local dialects and I've got a girlfriend who's a local girl and she's got local parents, local to Huizhou. Um, so e each different province have got, has got their own different dialects and, and a different culture of people. And then, and then within my province, there's probably three or four different dialects. Um, there's like Hakka, there's like Huizhou and they all speak different languages. So as soon as my girlfriend, me and my girlfriend go back to her parents' house, they all start speaking in, in Huizhou dialect. And again, I don't understand a word of Huizhou dialect. Huizhou dialect kind of sounds, sounds a mix between Thai and Chinese. So it's very difficult to understand. And then when they're talking to me, they'll switch back to Mandarin. Mandarin's like the, Mandarin's like the main language of China. And then every different province you go to, people speak a different language. And even when my girlfriend goes to a different province, maybe in Chengdu, people speak a different language to her and she doesn't even understand them. So you go to a different province and hope, and hope people speak the main language, which is Mandarin, okay? And then obviously coming to China, people have their own traditions. People have their own celebrations. For example, people here, people here celebrate different festivals. We've just had the Qingming festival where they celebrate the dead people, which is like a bank holiday Monday. Um, and there's also there's also the spring festival and there's many different festivals which people celebrate where the cities get covered in red and people go people go see their family and people generally celebrate with food so again the traditions when you're celebrating a festival the actual tradition is pretty much the same as the UK you go to see family and you all you all get together have some food have a couple of drinks 
Um, so yeah, again, there's there's not too much of a huge culture difference in terms of how in terms of how you celebrate things. You know, it's, it's all mostly evolved around family, friends, and just coming together, giving each other gifts in, in terms of a hong bao. Um, so yeah. And then if you want to talk about even more specific cultures, again, the kind of traditional religious culture here is exactly the same as the UK. I'd, I'd say there's probably more, more traditional here and more uphold of the local traditions here than there is in the UK. But that's not to say there isn't traditional people in the UK. My grandma went to church, okay? My girlfriend's family is also religious, but they just, um, they don't go to a church, they go to a small temple and then offer, offer money. So, so they, so they practice their religions and faiths in a slightly different way. But again, it's, it's not too much different. In the UK, local traditions and cultures are kind of dying, whereas in China they've managed to uphold it quite well. Jesus, cook an egg on this bench, that's for sure. But anyway, the final topic or subtopic I'm going to hit is the culture of food. And I feel like I'm blabbering on a little bit in this video. I haven't really planned too well, but anyway. Thankfully, the final topic is food, culture of food. So one of the key benefits of coming to China is the incredible variety of food. Um, there's many different provinces in China each which have um, populations in each city um, so you can so you can get such an incredible variety of food I'm not I'm not even sure how many different provinces there are but each different province has their own specific specific kind of food um, I guess the north of China focuses mainly on meat you know you go to Beijing you get the amazing roast duck which is one of my favorites here you go to the colder places and then the more rural areas in the west, they focus on like lamb, sheep, mutton, um, and beef, more meaty products, kind of barbecue style food. Whereas if you go to my city, there's a large hacker population here. So me and my girlfriend went to a hacker restaurant last night and then ate, it's, it's mainly fried food. So it's like we ate, we ate beef and bamboo, we had some sweet and sour pork, and then we had some um, chow mi fun, which is like a fried, fried noodles. Um, so yeah, again, this, this province actually actually has quite quite simple food. You know, it's nothing too crazy. One of the most popular dishes here, and like the cheapest popular dishes, is like the noodle soup, which is only I think I've done a video on the noodle soup, but it's incredibly cheap. Everyone eats it here. All of my colleagues eat it eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, but again, it's got such an incredible variety. So so you can really pick and choose pick and choose whichever you want, whenever you want, at any any point of the day. Um, so yeah, the food is fantastic. And then the culture of food, you know, how do people eat here? This is one of the main, this is, this is the big difference between how we eat in the UK. And obviously, as you know, in the UK, my mum will cook a, cook a meal, then give each individual their plate of food. My mum will stay in the kitchen, and I'll run off to the living room. My dad will stay in the kitchen, and then we'll, we'll be eating in all different places. Whereas here, here is tradition and then Traditions to eat together and then the traditions upheld very well. It doesn't matter whether you're a modern style family or an old style family, people always eat together here. And what you'll do is each person will have like a bowl of rice. It, it, depending on the meal obviously, but but talking in general, each person will have a bowl of rice and then and then they'll have sharing dishes put on like a spinning table. And then this table, this table can be spun around, and you'll and you'll kind of pick pick off little bits, um, bit by bit, and put it on top of your rice. Mix it with a little bit of rice, and then eat it. Um, subsequently, eat it. And I, honestly, I much prefer doing that because not only not only in the UK do we eat way too fast. You know, I like wallop a meal down in five minutes. Whereas here, you know, some meals can take between an hour and two hours to eat. Because the waitresses will be bringing them kind of one by one the table will be spinning around you're picking it a little bit a little bit by a little bit and it's just a much more pleasant way to eat everyone sat around the table talking and chatting cheers and drinks um, so so the food culture here is really great um, it's much more sociable and um, tradition tradition in that sense is very well uphold you know it doesn't matter 
doesn't matter what kind of family you got, people always come together for the food here. Food, food is the central part. Food is the central part of their culture. I was speaking to one of the one of the local guys here, my students' parents actually, and and for us in the UK, we like to have a drink, or well, we like to eat a meal and then go out for a drink, kind of thing. Whereas here, they they, they won't they won't drink without eating something. You know, every time they have a drink, they have to eat something. Um, and again, I'm generalizing, but, but food and drink go together here. Whereas me personally, if I was in the UK, I would definitely not mix food and drink. Unless it's on a Sunday and you're having a family barbecue or something, and, or obviously if it's a special occasion. But if we're going out on a Friday night or out on a Saturday night, it's food and then drink, not together, not together. So food really is one of the notable differences here. Okay, so that wraps up this video. If any, if any of you, not that any of you watch, but if any of you watching have any questions that you want me to go through, I'd be happy to go through them. So hope you enjoy this video and over and out. This is my block, I'm, I'm all the way up on the 70th floor. Absolutely phenomenal day here, it's got 30 degrees, not a cloud to be seen. I'm gonna head out, I'm gonna head out and grab some high food.